What's going on, button pushers? Welcome to the channel. If you guys are new here, uh, my name is David, and uh, if you guys are coming back, welcome back. It's so good to see you again. Today we're talking about the RS3 Pro. Uh, I might say the RS3, I might say Ronin S3 a lot. It's the same thing. But this has been a long way video from you guys, the subscribers and followers on Instagram. And uh, I'm going to go over a lot of things. I'm not going to really talk about the technical stuff much, because you can always find that on the spec sheet. This is going to be more about my experiences using it. start off the video I want to say that it is honestly better than what I had initially thought it was going to be like based on reading the spec sheet from my one other video like a few weeks ago um, it's definitely better and at the end of the video I'm gonna really go over who exactly I think this gimbal is for is it worth upgrading to depending on where you are from what standpoint you're at if you're just starting no gimbal or if you're from the Ronin 1 or you're with the RS2 so stay tuned for that and you can always use the chapters in my videos to see and hit specific pinpoints that I do talk about. Let's start the video by saying this. I think that the RS3 and the RS2 are pretty much the same thing, except the RS3 has addressed all of the issues that I have found in the RS2. So honestly, I feel like the RS3 could be called the RS2 Pro rather than the RS3 Pro because it's kind of the same thing based on what I've used so far and what I've kind of felt, but it has all those minor tweaks addressed. All those stuff that really bothered me, all the things that kind of needed fixing in the RS2, they fix it in the RS3, but honestly, I don't know if it's enough to call it its own model. Just a quick dabble into who exactly this is for. This is for people with a bit bigger cameras like the 1DX series or, or you know, ones with battery grips on it because it is made to handle heavier cameras a bit better, or even the Komodo, because there is a lot of things that go into play with it. but. We're not talking like Zion crane weight. That is like unmatchable for gimbals unless you're actually using the crane, but we're talking just easier handling. Anyways, let's uh, get into what you get out of the box. I did have a 12 minute unboxing video, but I'm just gonna kind of cut it up to the important parts and kind of give you guys the rundown while I'm talking. So one of the biggest things that DJI did when they upgraded from the RS1 to the RS2 was introduce a carrying case. And we're continuing to get that carrying case here in the RS3, but on the inside of the carrying case, we're actually getting a lot more cool compartments. But before we get into that, the RS3 is slightly bigger than the RS2 case because there is a longer arm when it comes to the actual gimbal itself. So it's understandable, but we're generally getting about the same size, maybe like an inch or two deeper and longer. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's still so much better than the RS1 carrying case. Also, rather than two zippers like the RS2 case, we are getting one big zipper that has all of the compartments in it for the RS3 case, and it's organized a little bit better, and I really enjoy the way it is, and it also has straps to lock in your gimbal. So like always, it'll come with the essential stuff, the battery grip, the tripod stand, the phone mount. Um, this one, the RS3 Pro combo, actually comes with the briefcase mode grip, which is really nice for some situations. I'm probably not going to be using that one too much because I kind of don't like it based on what I've already used. It comes with the focus motor, two plates actually, and I'm going to get into that next. Um, it comes with the Raven Eye transmission system, the gimbal of course, and a bunch of cables and screws. Now the double plate is so, so crucial to include in something like this because the biggest problem I had with the RS2 was that we were balancing everything off that tiny, tiny little quick release plate even if it was the heaviest camera. So especially for things like the Komodo, you would get so many micro jitters, no matter how slow you were walking, it was really, really tough to prevent any micro jitters because all that weight distribution was just on that tiny little thing from one single screw. And of course, David, why don't you just get the small rig plate? And I, I have it, I literally have it, but it had compatibility issues with my tilto plate, so I couldn't even run the Komodo on it because it wasn't securing tight enough for me to feel comfortable to run my Komodo on it without thinking it might fall off. So that's kind of the reason why I never used the Komodo on the RS2 in the first place. So again, build-wise, the RS3 Pro is going to be 
slightly, slightly, slightly bigger than the RS2 when it comes to the arm as well as the actual height itself, which I guess would include the arm. And this is super important for running bigger cameras again like the Komodo because one, it adds a lot of more room for clearance in comparison to the RS2. It allows me to mount things and feel more comfortable actually mounting them and being able to mount them a lot easier because the Komodo had zero issues. What usually took me a while in the RS2 to figure out and configure and make sure it worked it took me about 10 minutes on the RS3. The grip on the handle feels a bit softer uh, from what I can remember, but I wouldn't know. I've used the RS2 for a really long time. Mine's super beat up and there's barely any grip left. So <laughs> I, I don't know. It feels softer than what I remember, but I could be wrong. Another mention on the new locks for the RS3 is that I feel like they're a little bit better designed because on the RS2, these locks, they're metal and they kind of they're kind of protruding just a bit. I feel like that influenced a lot of external sources because I, the external sources were able to kind of latch onto it and unlock it. Even if it was like in my bag or something, it would accidentally unlock. And I feel like that is something to keep in mind. So having the RS3, their, their locks are a little bit more rounded, a little more button-like rather than switches. Even though there's still switches, it's still less prone to getting caught on things and unlocking. So that is a mention because it happens to me all the time with the RS2. Lastly, with the build, we are getting a larger LCD screen compared to the RS2, only slightly, like very, very slightly, but it made all the difference in the world for me because I have super fat thumbs. Look at my thumbs. They're super fat and I would accidentally press things all the time. It's just one of those things that makes ease of use a little bit better, especially for people with bigger fingers. And it's also more visible. It uh, feels crisper and that might just be me, but it just looks a lot better. And um, on top of that, we're also getting a mode switch on the side right by the power button before on the RS2 this is actually built into the screen so you know sometimes I would accidentally touch the screen and change the mode but now I can just accidentally flip the switch instead of touching the screen so that is another thing that I can mess up on but it is a change on the RS2 and the RS3 bodies now before we actually get into the footage and the stabilization which is probably what all of you guys are waiting for I want to talk about the one feature that everybody already knows about and it is super crucial and I do want to talk about it, even though I'm not going to get into all the technical stuff. The auto locking, and it's really, really cool, but also has one really big, not huge flaw, but I'll talk about the flaw later. The auto locking, it's super cool. You can power it off and it'll auto lock itself. When you turn it back on, it will unlock itself. Same thing with sleeping mode. If it's like up and ready, you can put it in sleep mode, it'll lock in the position. So then when you unlock it, it's already ready to be shooting. It's not gonna fold back up when you do it when it's already on. That's only on power off. So on power off, it's gonna go completely vertical, flat like this. And then when you uh, power or you put into sleep mode when you're shooting, it's gonna stay built and ready to shoot for you. You could even pick it up while it's locked. If you really need to get like super fast shot and don't have time to unlock it, you could still get it. It won't be like portrait mode or anything. Now let's get into the footage before we get into the flaw. Um, honestly, the stabilization was really, 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 really good. Um, there were micro jitters, a lot, actually not even micro jitters, a lot of shaking when I was running with the Komodo, but honestly, I was literally sprinting. <laughs> I was dashing as fast as I could and that that's not even with the ninja walk and you know the Komodo doesn't have in-body stabilization I wasn't using it ibis lens I, I didn't have any of that so it, it was prone to shaking a lot based on how I was running but um, without the running the actual walking if you're really trying to get good shots the stabilization handled the Komodo amazingly like absolutely so smooth and on top of that I was running without a monitor. I was literally trying to look at the top of Komodo and you know, I can only do so much in that, especially because it was super bright. So based on all of those conditions together, the RS3 held up really well and got the shot that was needed. Well, I guess for this video, whatever was needed, but it looks really, really good even handling the Komodo. Now we look at the footage with the RS3 and the R3. That's with the in-body stabilization active, not the digital though. Um, in-body stabilization is active on the R3, I'm going to mention that. But the footage looks absolutely amazing, super smooth, super awesome, works really well. Um, briefcase mode is something I'm really going to have to get used to because it's not something that I really ever did. As far as the learning curve from the RS3 and the RS2, there is really no difference. It's kind of the same thing. The smoothness, I do feel like it's a tad bit smoother and DJI does say that it's 20% smoother. Um, 
I can vouch for that, I guess. <laughs> you know, it's really hard to tell because 20% is so little when it comes to stuff like this, but I think I could kind of feel it. I could really get under, I could really understand what they were trying to say there. Um, but, you know, it is smooth, it works really well, and handled the Komodo absolutely beautifully. I think a lot better than the R's too. So I think this comes more towards heavier cameras and what you know, the, the gimbal can do for those heavier cameras compared to smaller cameras like the A7S and all that stuff. So does it actually stabilize? <laughs> yes, it does. It does an amazing job and it's definitely worth it when if you're literally just need that. <laughs> However, one flaw with the auto locking is something I'm going to mention. And I think that's the only real flaw that I've found so far is that when it auto locks, um, when you turn it off, it doesn't actually go all the way. And I think that might be me. Maybe it was me when I um, applied the red Komodo. I don't know if it'll be a different, uh, I don't know if it's any different when I'm doing it for the uh, R3 or another camera, but it doesn't auto lock all the way for one axis. And I just kind of have to go back, adjust it, unlock it, and then fix it, and then relock it. <laughs> and that's just something that uh, I think I needed to address because it is happening to me. I don't know if it's happening to other people because based on all the videos I've watched, it, it hasn't happened to anybody else, but it happened to me. So I guess I just have bad luck. But overall guys, the RS3 has been absolutely amazing to me. I use it on a shoot. It looks really good. The footage is awesome. And I, I, there's, I mean, there's not much to hate about it. It's literally, like I said before, it's the RS2 with all its uh, issues addressed here in the RS3 so that is something to keep in mind again though it is for bigger cameras well not necessarily you can definitely use it for smaller cameras but if you have the RS2 already and you're not running like a heavy camera like the 1DX or the Komodo honestly I don't really recommend upgrading it's really not worth it maybe wait for the RS4 for sure especially if you're running like the any Sony mirrorless cameras or anything that isn't an FX6 or higher uh, if you have a black magic probably not worth upgrading either um, if you have the disposable income if you got the extra money or you can sell your RS2 for a good price sure go for it that's exactly what I did uh, but otherwise I really don't think it's worth upgrading for right now the RS4 is probably gonna be 10 times better and I would definitely wait for that and hopefully just hopefully they increase the payload on the RS4 so <laughs> that is something that uh, you should definitely keep in mind because I wouldn't go wasting money if you really didn't have to Anyways, guys, that's going to be all for today's video, guys. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of the RS3 Pro. And I'm sorry if you guys think this wasn't too informative because I, I know there's a ton of videos out there that you can find a bunch of information from anyways. So I really just want to talk about my personal experiences rather than go into all the technical stuff. But again, if you guys are interested in buying one or looking at the specs, feel free to check any of the links in the description below. I'll do Amazon, b &H, uh, DJI itself. Definitely check it out if you guys are interested. I think it's a really amazing gimbal and has a lot of potential. The Ronin S series has been so amazing to me and it's helped me out in my career so much. So definitely check it out. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you guys hit give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, keep pushing buttons, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.